aside the street calling issue here um what do you guys do what's like what's a good way to chirp the other team and get them riled up but like not get you into any trouble for me i would kind of just smile back at them just give them a big smile not even say a word just smile right at them and look them right in the eyes yeah just smile right at them not give them any attention or just shake your head like you don't even have to say anything like you're nothing not just me. maybe compliment them a little bit yeah, like your skates are really shiny. Doesn't look like you skate very hard. You don't use them much. Yeah, yeah I guess. Are those so. from your sister? <laughs> Sorry, apparently I belong on the hockey team. <laughs> Other ideas? Yeah, kind of to add on to both of those, definitely don't show uh, that they're getting in your head, uh, whether they are or not. Um, like uh, what Jake said, if you keep a smile on your face, that's just going to make them more angry. So uh, definitely stay happy and that'll that'll work for you. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's not so much what you say. Um, it's kind of just having that, that swagger and that attitude and, and then showing them up and that'll, uh, that'll get to them before they can get to you. Take it. That's very classy. That's very classy gameplay. Like, I would literally be talking about their sisters. <laughs> That's another way. That's definitely another road you can go. You can get real personal, talk about family, maybe tell them they smell bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no that one hits home what about uh actual cat calling uh i have a question about uh how do you how do you speak to a female that you've never met before definitely not like that yeah <laughs> I mean, that's creepy and awkward like i mean you want to present yourself obviously it depends on who the person is to you if you've never met them before or their friend family or whatever you want to maybe not at night but you can, <laughs> i don't in, in that evening. position they are in definitely not just like you said cat calling them from the street you want to <laughs> show them who you actually are i guess and a nice person maybe take a page out of edward's book yeah yeah like just pull the, up in the car and be classic. like get in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or did i misread that no yeah he's pretty much <laughs> maybe you meant Pretty take much. her to dinner or something you yeah know? Oh. act like a gentleman I ge yeah there is that i like it okay i'll leave off michelle you take over all right here we go guys at the beginning of the chapter we find out that tyler has been lying to everyone telling them that he's going to take bella to the prom have you ever had anyone lie about something you did like taking a dive after a clean check how did you or how should you respond? I mean, if the refs already call it in hockey's perspective, there's nothing we can, really can do. You can either complain or just accept it. But you can also get him back in a later play, maybe not by hitting him with her, her car. But, <laughs> um, you can obviously do that, which would be taking a bad penalty back or moving on from it and trying to evade it, I guess control what you can control and focus on your next shift after that. I mean, you, you always have your event it might not be necessarily in your favor. Uh, you can't control that, but what you can control is your reaction and that's going to give you a better chance of having a positive outcome. Well said is, is a big thing we, uh, we focus on at the Pontiacs and um, just your response and, and leaving the past in the past and um, how you respond just shows whether or not you can, you can take those, you know, ups and downs and, and turn them into something positive, so. Well, that's, that's really interesting what you guys have all touched on. So, you know, we see in this chapter, uh, Edward wants to retaliate uh, for, for what's been going on, but uh, he's telling himself, no, it's like, it's not worth it, or it's not it's not going to be helpful to, to retaliate against these guys. Uh, so what, what I guess is your line for when somebody does something, when are you going to take a penalty uh, because you have to retaliate for something that somebody did or when do you just have to let it go? There's, there's a fine line in a game. It all depends on the situation. Um, you know, sometimes if, if it's like a series against a team, um, that kind of grit and, and chippiness is necessary because it carries over into the to next games. But at the same time, like you don't want to take a, a stupid penalty and um, hurt your team. But 
um, you kind of just have to, to read the situation and read the flow of the game and um, keep your head on your shoulders no matter what. Don't let your emotions take over. Um, but definitely reaction is necessary sometimes, like when a teammate's being targeted or, or you just need to defend yourself and, and show that you can take it and, and you're going to give it back too. So there's a fine line there for sure. Yeah, I think Mike, uh, Mike kind of hit the nail on the head there, but just to reiterate it, um, I mean, there's a time and a place for everything and rarely, very rarely is the right to retaliate. Obviously, that's a selfish play. Um, but like Mike said, if, if a teammate's being targeted uh, or you need that momentum, that grit to carry over into maybe the next shift, the next period, even the next game, if this is a series, um, and send that message, uh, I think that there is a time and a place and sometimes it, you know, you do need to do it. Well said from both those guys. I don't even know what to add on from that. Yeah, I think it all depends on the situation. Like if it's a high game with two minutes left, it's probably not a good idea to take a retaliation penalty. But if you're up by five with a minute left, I think it's a different story. Sometimes, you know, if, if you know it's not going to hurt you, it's worth sending that message to, to not, um, you know, that was not acceptable to do to the team or the players. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, guys, those are really great answers. Uh, let me go back to my bag of hockey twilight questions here. I, I think a lot of what we saw in this chapter is really um, everybody having to weigh uh, what's, a, what's a bad decision uh, what's normally a bad decision versus what is a good idea in this moment. So things that normally would be terrible ideas are things that people are choosing to do now because the situation is just very unusual. Um, so that brings us to, you know, we were seeing the beginning of Bella's resolution to trust Edward, despite knowing that he's a vampire, which is a big trade-off here. So have you ever made a dangerous play that's worked out well, uh, like passing in front of the net because you saw a really, really great opening? And how do you weigh that uh, that risk against the reward? Yeah, so so to, to start it off, um, Coach Rick, one of, the, one of the things he always says is um, he's fine with, with any type of, of risky play as long as it works out. Um, and if it doesn't, then, then you're going to hear it and, you know, face the, the repercussions for it. So, um, you know, it's in a game and in a season and stuff like there's a lot on the line, but you don't want to take that creativity and that, that risk factor out of your game because that's how, you know, you make good plays and, and build as a player. So it's important to find a balance there and um, obviously like know the situations of the game. You don't want to take a, a, a high, you know, high risk, low reward play in, in you know, the crunch moments of a game. But um, whether it be like, making passes through the middle, which necessarily isn't always the, the first look, you know, that can catch teams off guard, especially like the way a lot of teams forecheck and everything like that. And um, in like the offensive zone, um, you don't want to be a perimeter player. So getting to the middle a lot of times is, is where turnovers, you know, can happen or, or you can get caught with your head down, but that's also where the goals are scored. So um, it's kind of a, a balance between both. And then like coach Rick says, if it works out, then no harm, no harm done. All good. There's always that risk risk factor there. And coming from, I mean, I haven't played for coach Rick yet or on the Bonneville Pontiacs, but in the past seasons, I think most coaches like for you to kind of expand and take risks and it, like gain confidence making those plays because you will mess up through a long season, like uh, Michael said there, but you will learn from that. And like, you will face repercussions, but it's all part of the game. So it's all up in your head and you just got to make the play. Yeah, no, I like what Jake said. He said, uh, it's all up in your head. And I think that's, that's a huge part of this uh, kind of being, having the mental capacity to make these high risk plays. Um, it's, it's difficult to kind of, not be anxious and, and going out in a shift knowing, you know, the situation or maybe before you make a play, but uh, having that mental capacity to not worry about it and, and be present and living in the moment uh, helps you be successful when you're making those high risk plays. And uh, also when you're making them understanding the risk and reward, 
Uh, obviously, everything is situational. Like uh, Charlie mentioned earlier in a game, 2-2 two -two tie, you might not want to take a retaliation penalty because uh, that has a, a really high risk and a really low reward. Um, but if, if you're down a goal and you want to make a stretch pass, and uh, that, that's a different situation where the, where the risk is high, but the reward is also very high. So um, I think that definitely relates back to, to Twilight here. Yeah, I think you have to be smart about the risks that you take. And uh, it all comes back to situational awareness and uh, taking risks at the right times. What I'm hearing is you have to be making these plays tactically. You have to be smart and weighing them. It's not really an emotional thing that you're doing. It's using your head. Uh, so what is, uh, what is everyone's opinion? Uh, is Bella taking a smart tactical move here or is this not the way that she should be making that risk to reward kind of decision? She's for, for sure taking a risk, I think. It could work out, it could not. We don't know yet. Yeah, no, I think she's definitely taking a risk here. Uh, but to give her the benefit of the doubt and to put myself in her shoes, uh, she has asked him uh, if he's a vampire and he's obviously declined. Um, so to be completely fair to her, uh, you know, she, she's just taking his word for it. Edward seems like a stand-up guy. Seems like a true gentleman. So she's, uh, he's given her enough evidence, you know, to suggest that this is a risk worth, worth taking. For, from the chapter, it looks like that it's a good risk to take. Yeah. Mike, how about you? Yeah, I mean, you know, if, if she's following her intuition and, and her heart here, I mean, you can't blame her for taking the risk and um, kind of got to commend her for that, no matter, you know, how serious the risk could be in this situation. All right. Well done, guys. Uh, we're going to go to a very silly question that I wrote. So have fun with this. Bella has finally broken through Edward's defenses to get some answers. After spending a long time playing in your zone, what does it feel like to be on a breakaway? Yeah, well, um, to start being being hemmed in the zone is is one of the the worst parts of the game you get really tired um it's not fun everybody wants to play in the offensive zone um so especially if you get you know stuck in the zone getting sprung for a breakaway is one that's a really big momentum swing right off the bat especially getting you know dominated the shift the, the tides of the game could be turning or that could be a, a crucial moment um and then capitalizing on the breakaway obviously is, is what you look to do everybody um, get super excited going on a breakaway, you know, that's one of the, the most exciting parts of the game. Um, so it's, it's definitely a great feeling. And I mean, um, if you can put the puck in, it's even better. So. Uh, to add on what he's saying there is uh, it, it also, he did a great explanation on when you're in your zone and getting that breakaway, there's no better feeling when everyone's behind you, just you and the goalie. But when you're hemmed in your own zone for who knows how long or how hard you're working to get that puck out, you're on a breakaway, it can be not so fun. Like if you're going down, you're giving your all, you want to get the breakaway, but you're tired. You're for sure tired. It's definitely a sigh of relief, but also not only is it that, it also is a, a really big swing of momentum and a boost of energy. You know, your, your legs might be feeling heavy and tired at the moment, but uh, something like that happens, you, you feel the momentum change and uh you know, your, your legs might start moving a little faster than they were before. Yeah, Will gets a lot of breakaways. So yeah, so many. Huh. Well, well oh, a sorry. Kind of pressure to have. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that Bella is on a breakaway, you know, she's been, I think, really playing in her own zone for a long time, trying to figure this out. Everyone's been telling her that she's crazy. Finally, she's getting some answers here. Um, is there something that she should be looking out for? Like, are there, uh, is there something that you have to keep in mind while you're on a breakaway? Things that uh, you have to be be alert to, be aware of as you're going down the ice? Yeah, I mean, um, just for a breakaway, like you wanna be aware of back pressure, um, the angle you're coming in, the speed you're coming in at, but you don't wanna overthink it too much. Um, you don't wanna get into like a mind game with, with the goal. You, you wanna dictate um, and, and act instead of reacts and you know you're coming in 
full speed on the goalie. So um, you're in control. So you don't really, really want to think too much. You just want to, um, you know, have your mind made up, know what you're doing and, and try and put the puck in. Okay. So the idea is to just go with the forward momentum, not think too hard uh, based on your reading of the chapter and her, you know, hemming and hawing a bit at the table. Do you think that she's, um, she's kind of taking this opportunity uh, as well as she could, or is she trying to try to play those mind games here and might that trip her up? I think she's falling for it. I think the way Edward is and the way he presents himself and like in the chapter, how he talks about him and with his, like his, how he dazzles people like the waiter when he was in the, in the going for dinner with her. Like, I think she's falling for it. Full on. Not going to be getting that puck in the net. We'll she see. Might. We'll see. That'd be the next chapter. Everybody read on. All right. Edward has to work hard in this chapter not to go after Bella's four attackers. And, uh, you know, um, he tells himself again that it wouldn't be helpful to do that, like we talked about not taking the penalty uh, where it's stupid. But uh, do you think... Uh, so when, when Edward explicitly demands that Bella distracts him to calm him down, like that's probably not something that's happening uh, a lot on the bench or the locker room, but is there someone on your team who really lightens the mood when things get, uh, when things get dicey or, you know, the mood uh, drops, things are getting chippy, uh, things aren't going well? Yeah. Well, just to touch on, on the first thing you said, um, you know, in, in a game, um, you can be on the ice with a teammate and see him starting to get worked up and um, maybe you step in and, and get in the way of him and someone else. So you can prevent that from happening. But, um, you know, in, in terms of, of the last thing you said, uh, yeah, an important part of a team is like everything on the ice, but um, as, as well as like the morale boosters off the ice. Um, and every team I've been on and, and I'm sure every team that I, I will be on from from here on out has, you know, those, those group of guys that um, lighten the mood and, and joke around in the locker room, but um, at the same time are focused and, and don't distract us from the game. But it's, it's important to not grip your stick too tight and um, be too serious about it because it's hockey and, and it's fun. And um, if you play loose and, and play to, to love the game, you're going to have more success with that. So I think every good team has, has an energy guy that, brings energy whether it's a weight room the, the locker room or games or practices I mean I'm not around the boys on Bonneville so I don't know exactly there but I mean like Michael said on every team there's always those guys who stand out there's always those leaders but you can always be a individual leader no matter who you are like you said if you see a buddy of yours a teammate anyone you can always step in there and help them out it's just it doesn't you don't have to have a letter to be that guy like you're all, you're all brothers there, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, definitely easy to, to stick out if you're a more uh, outgoing guy. Uh, we got a bunch of those on our team. Uh, you asked for a specific example. I got to say Cash uh, Rasmussen. Uh, he's definitely a high-energy, high-intensity guy. Uh, playing with guys like him definitely makes it uh, easier to play. It makes you want to play more. Uh, and it's a lot more fun when you play hard and you're winning with guys like him. Also, I also want to shout out um, Chase Schmidt. Um, he, he's often in charge of the music in the locker room, and uh, he's a really high energy guy and, and gets us going for sure. So, shout out Schmidt. We had Schmidt on last week. He was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, so, it is like it's important then as a team, you are saying you do. Um, you have to be aware of how other people are feeling and, uh, and making sure that, you know, they're where they need to be. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a lot like a, a good coach, um, a big part of being a good coach is, you know, reading the bench and the team and getting a feel, um, for where everyone's at and individually as well as a team. And the same thing goes for, for players. Like nobody has, has a better, uh, view on the game than the guys that are in it and playing it and everything like that. So, um, it's important for everyone to, have an idea of, of what's going on at all times and, and reading the room. And um, there's different guys at different times that will speak up and have the right thing to say at, at different times. And um, that brings a lot of team success. It's not always the guy with, with the letter, um, but as a whole. So. Uh, 
we've got a question from the audience here. Uh, so Karen wants to know, how do you handle it when another player acts like they don't do dirty stuff uh, and the ref doesn't see it, but you do and it's really impacting your game? Yeah, I mean, for that one, I think uh, obviously you don't want to get caught doing the dirty stuff, right? <laughs> obviously, it's, it's great if the ref doesn't see it, but uh, if you go back to that risk and reward we were talking about, um, you know, maybe it might, you know, aggravate the other team a little bit and may, might make the game a little more chippy. And, uh, but you definitely want to uh, let your teammate know, like, that's not the right thing to do. Play the game the right way. Because um, at the end of the day, if you do get caught, that's, that'll end up being viewed as a selfish act. And uh, that's definitely not going to help the team in the long run. Yeah, and if, and if it's someone on the other team, I mean, um, players that that play like that their, their whole game plan is to to get in your head and throw you off your game like that so uh, the biggest thing is just not entertaining that that type of game and um, putting them in their place whether it be you know on the scoreboard or or physically or um, just not letting it get to you and and then that's how you um, take them out of the game because they're focused on that and you're focused on uh, the more important aspects of the game well, it's really interesting. You guys have talked a lot about uh, about being observant of um, of your team, uh, where everyone's mental state is, uh, watching the other team to make sure that they're not getting into into your heads or into any of your teammates' heads. Um, but what about you know? We've got Edward here, like specifically asking Bella. He's saying like, "You got to distract me, or you got to do this. Like something's, I'm I'm gonna go off. You know, if if." you don't help me out. Does anyone, uh, if you're, if you're self-aware enough to know that you're having this issue, are you able to solve it for yourself or is it common to, to ask, uh, your teammates for help with that? I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say it's common. I think it's uh, a great thing that you're able to recognize that you need that help. Uh, and that goes beyond hockey and on the bench and, you know, controlling your temper, but uh, I, I definitely applaud anybody that can recognize that and reach out for help. I mean, for us, we're, we're fortunate enough to have um, Jason Wewad. He's our, our mental skills coach. Um, and he, he works with all of us individually on, on you know, the, the problem solving aspect of being able to do it yourself because um, you don't want that to be a distraction to, to others in the team. But then again, at the same time, like coaches, other teammates, um, they'll do different things to either fire guys up or, or get them focused if they're getting off to a slow start or and whatnot. And every guy responds a different way. So you kind of just have to figure out what gets through them the best. Charlie, got anything to add? Or are you good there? Uh, I'm all set there. All right. Well, those are all of my questions. Jesse, did you have anything you wanted to add? What you guys know so far of the story of Twilight. Are you Team Edward or Team Jacob? Oh yes. Oh Edward. 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 Yeah, I, I don't really know uh, Jacob, but Edward seems like seems like the pick right now. I don't want to like spoil it for you guys, but Jacob is the werewolf. Oh, I've seen I've seen I've seen uh, one or two movies, so I'm kind of aware of what's going on, but not fully. I'm still Team Edward. I didn't even know there were werewolves. I thought it was just vampires. <laughs> that is fantastic. And then my final question, super final question, I promise, is if you had the opportunity to become immortal and live forever, would you take it or would you choose to live out a normal human lifespan and pass away at the ripe old age of 87? Oh, I'm going immortal. I'm going immortal. I want to see what's going to happen and who knows when. And something's going to happen. I know that. Awesome. Yeah, definitely going immortal. The world's developing so fast. Who knows what's going to, you know, think about when you guys were kids, like how, how much, you know, you think you would be on a video chat with us? Probably not, right? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, that was like a Jetsons, like space age movie kind of thing. Like, right. So who knows what's going like, to happen? That was amazing technology. And now I'm just holding my phone in my hand and shouting into it at you. <laughs> exactly. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah, no, I, I agree. Mike, Charlie? You, you want to go first, Mike? 
Yeah, yeah. I'll go with a hot take and and not go the immortal route and just live out a, a normal life. Um, I just I think it would be be weird to think about um, in like a hundred years or so, everybody around me will will be someone different from you know the life I started when I grew up. So that would be a little uh, a little lonely for me. So make some new friends, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, come on, come on, rest of us. We're all we're all gonna live forever. Peer pressuring you into immortality. Yeah. As well, that's a that's a really good answer. Charlie, how about you? Yeah, I definitely would not not be immortal. I think what makes life great is you got you got one chance, one chance to leave your mark, and I, I think being immortal kind of defeats that. Well, I think that is actually the end of my questions for today. Thank you again. Uh, you've done such a good job, you guys. Uh, we'll release you for the evening. Um, just absolutely fantastic answers here. Uh, have a great night. Thanks for having Thank you so much for having us. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.